Hey guys, Christmas is here. And so I thought that it'd be a good time to help you to decorate a little bit um, around your house with some really cute, quick, beginner friendly Christmas projects. The one that I have on the wall behind me is using a two inch gridded interfacing. This is a huge, huge help to help you to create quick projects where you really need to have your squares that are matching, but stitching together your individual squares can get a little bit tedious. And so what I'm gonna do today is show you how to put these squares together so that you have a lovely table runner, you can make pillows with this, you can make quilts with it in no time using this method. The table runner that I have on the wall behind me took very little time to actually make. I used scrap fabric that I had around and you can see that it's all in Christmas colors. Those pieces, these fabrics that I used are part of the fabrics that I do carry in the shop. They're from the Yuletide line and they're also from the Howdy Christmas line with a couple of little things sprinkled in. But I took everything here out of my scrap bin so it wasn't that uh, I had to cut yardage. It doesn't take that much fabric to make. The finished size of the gridded portion of this project is actually 36 and a half by 13. That's just the center section. So if you count it out, it's nine blocks coming down and it is 25 blocks going across. It's nine blocks going down, 25 blocks going across. That's not too bad. That's, a, that's not a very large piece of interfacing to use. I then, once I had the center section uh, put together, then I added a couple of borders. It bumped my finished runner up to 45 and a half long and 21 and a half tall. That's a pretty respectable size table runner. With the gridded interfacing, you can customize to whatever size you want. You can add on extra smaller pieces to make it longer if you need, or you can obviously make it smaller however you'd like. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so what I have here is a piece of the gridded interfacing. The, on the right side of the interfacing, the side that does not have any glue dots on it, you can see the gray gridded lines. That's what you're gonna need to use in order to sew. On the opposite side of it, you don't see any gridded lines. Now, I have my interfacing on gray, so it's very hard for me to see where my lines are supposed to be and how, how I'm supposed to lay out my blocks. However, I put down some pins to give me a bit of a guide so that I can see where my corners are supposed to be. It's my little version of what my dear friends call chelp. Not really cheating. It's more like just help. So I'm going to lay out my two inch pieces on my interfacing, just like this, to get a nine patch block. Now, just to let you guys know, the interfacing, this one is two inch sized grid. When everything is sewn and in place, then it will come down to an inch and a half in size. There are other interfaces facings that are available on the market. I have one that is not fusible. It does not have the glue dots on the back. And that one is a one inch interfacing. So now that I have my blocks laid out, then I'm going to take my iron and press. And I'm gonna be super careful not to let the iron come in contact with my interfacing or else I'll be gluing to my iron, right? And I'm just gonna come around and glue, melt all of that interfacing, all the glue on the interfacing, melt it to my fabric. Pretty quick and easy. So now we're all fused together and you can see coming through the back that my squares, my two inch squares of fabric line up in the blocks that are gridded on the interfacing. Okay, so here we go. Notice it didn't take a whole lot to get the glue dots to fuse to the back of my fabric. So the next step here is to stitch. How do we stitch? I'm gonna turn it to the back here and following this dotted line, I'm just gonna fold it on that line, take it to my machine and stitch a quarter inch all the way across, okay? I'm gonna do that here and here, and then I'll open it up and let you see how it turns out. So I went 
went ahead and on that fold, I stitched all the way across using a quarter inch seam allowance, which is my normal seam allowance, right? I did it on that first horizontal and I did it on this horizontal as well. What that did for me is tucked in the raw edges, the vertical raw edges of these blocks into the seam allowance. So I don't have any raw edges any longer. Now for the next move, I need to do my horizontal seams and I'll do it the same way, but there's a step that goes first. On the back, I can see where my vertical seams are supposed to be, or my next seams. I'm going to take a sharp pair of scissors and just snip. And all I snipped was where that seam is going to be down to the horizontal seam that I did. I'm just gonna clip these. You end up clipping like right in the middle of where the fabrics lay. The reason you do this is because just like with um, our regular sewing where you are uh, pressing to one side or the other to nest your seams, you have to do the same thing here. So I'm going to, I went ahead and clipped all of these and I'm going to press them. So these ones I'll press in, the bottom ones I'll press out, and the top ones I'll press out as well. The interfacing can be a little delicate, so I recommend that you use a press cloth when you're pressing your interfacing. Right now, I want you to be able to see how things are supposed to lay underneath the iron, so I'm not using a press cloth today, but I'm just using the edge of my iron to do my pressing. Okay, so at this point, you can see that I've pressed out, in, and out. That's going to allow me to nest my seams when I do my next seams. So I need to do my horizontals. I'm going to fold right on that dotted line. And if you guys can see, I have one set of seams going in one direction and then the bottom ones are going in another direction. That's exactly what nesting your seams does under normal circumstances. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just like before, I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance coming all the way across this one. And then I'll do a quarter inch seam allowance coming across this one and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, I have the vertical and the horizontal already completed. So you can see that all of my raw edges at the seams are, have been taken into those seam allowances without any issue. My final square, this center square, which is completely enclosed, comes out to be an inch and a half. It's no longer two inches. But you know what? It's super cute and it allows you to get some really cute detailed work going on. Um, you can see how the seams, the intersections, are perfect. I mean, yeah, they're perfect. So what I'm going to do, just like I clipped the seams the last time, I'm going to clip these seams coming in the other direction also. That's going to allow me to press going in opposite directions once again and flatten out those seams and the seam allowances will lay really nicely. So let me press those out. Okay, my friends, this is our finished product. You see your seams are going in opposite directions all the way through, they're nesting nicely, and it gives a nice flat block. Now, you can use this technique to make baby quilts. If you have a baby shower coming up, you don't have to use two inch blocks, you can use four inch pieces of fabric to fit into this gridded interfacing. You can use two, four, six inch squares to fit into the gridded interfacing. You need to make something pretty quick, make it pretty quick. The interfacing helps you out. This is uh, just a small one that I've done. I have another one just to kind of give you an idea. Let me turn Santa the right way. This is another one that I've started 
Now this one is seven squares tall um, by 20 squares across. It's going to end up being a little bit smaller than the one that's on the wall, the gridded section is, um, but it's the same premise. I wanted to show you this one because it gives you another layout alternative to the little diamond design that's going on in the one on the wall. This one is just diagonals, um, very simple, quick and easy. For this this one that um, is 7 by 20, I used two strips just to kind of give you an idea of how much fabric. I used two strips of each one of the colors cut at two inches and I subcut those two strips of fabric. Two inches by width of fabric. It's 20 strips per strip of fabric. I made this and I have so many more that I could use. I just wanna open up your eyes to a quick way of making quilts, a quick way of getting these pixelated looks without all the hassle of trying to make sure that all of your squares are just the right size and will meet up in the intersections just perfectly. I'm glad that you guys hung out with me to go through this quick project and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it and you're a first time visitor to this channel, please, please subscribe below. That helps me to know Know that you're interested in the content that I'm making. If you're interested in any of the fabrics that are in these projects, you can find them in my shop. It's all in the link below. Um, it's Howdy Christmas and Yuletide. Those are the two that I use. But I want you to know that the Christmas fabric is selling out pretty quickly. So pop on it now so that you will be prepared. If not for this Christmas, next Christmas is coming and it's a great time to get your fabric now. If you like this video, then you can click and check out the next video. It is a disappearing nine patch block. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.